You're all set, Madam President. The recording has begun. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to turn this meeting over to our Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Padilla. Thank you, Madam President. Good evening, Board Trustees and to our community. Uh, tonight I have two items and I will start with Operation Reopen and ask to share my screen. One second here. All right, Madam President, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen? All right, thank you. All right, so again, good evening. Uh, I have a couple of uh, updates for you. And so as you all know, today was the first day of virtual learning. Uh, I want to just thank everyone for, you know, just getting on board, uh, a big special thank you to our teachers, uh, our administrators, our families and teachers, uh, our students. I had my first uh, student town hall today. I'm hoping to repeat this every week and get more and more students to chime in and let us know what a day in a life of being a student is like during this virtual experience. And as I'll continue to just keep sharing, you know, we're all learning, so your feedback is critical for us to uh, make progress and ultimately hit our targets. Uh, while for the majority of today's experience was absolutely different and unique, obviously we've never started school this way. Uh, you know, the first day of school is always an exciting time. And for many of us, you know, in our gut, good old fashioned butterflies happen the night before school starts. And that was true last night as well. Uh, I want to just encourage everyone to stay with it. Again, you students, you had an opportunity to meet your teachers. Uh, we did get feedback that uh, based on our issue with ClassLink, there were a number of students and families that could, you know, had, a tr had trouble logging on, were experiencing delays, and we received word this evening that that should be fixed for tomorrow. But if it's not, I'm expecting you to let your teacher know, to talk to your principal, and let us know as well, so that way we can get right on it. Uh, so again, a big thank you for everyone to just getting prepared for today. We're sorry that for some of you, you know, there was the delay and issues with logging on. And for the many of you that were able to log on and have your attendance counted for today and begin to meet your classmates and your new teachers, we ask you to get a good night's sleep so that way you can be back at it again. Uh, as a reminder, uh, attendance is being taken every single day. So we want to make sure you're on time, ready to go each, each day. Uh, as I indicated, we had our student town hall and just thank you to the students who participated. We had students all, you know, from young elementary grades all the way through high school. Uh, and for the most part, 85% of them said today was a good day for them. And they shared a couple of areas where some improvements can be made. So students, scholars, thank you again for taking time and uh, giving us some input on how your day went. And as I indicated to you, I have two requests of you. Please make sure you mask up, All right? So if you're going outside, you put a mask on. If you know other people in your family or friends who go outside their house, please encourage them to uh, mask up as well. And then, uh, Please encourage and make sure you're shouldering up with your classmates. And so help them to get on time and, and participate and have their camera on and, and turn in their assignments so that way they start off on the right foot. Uh, we'll be putting out information for our next student in town hall uh, early tomorrow. So I'm gonna go through a couple of updates here uh, regarding the, you know, from now until the update we provided last week because there have been some things we wanted to provide some clarity on. Last week, we held our first ever virtual PD for superintendent conference days. Uh, and what I wanna note, there are two things I kinda wanna highlight for this. One, teachers and administrators were participating, you know, asking really good questions and doing everything they possibly can to prepare for today. 
However, we've used all of our superintendent conference days, right? So we did make the decision to front load, to build that digital capacity, to make sure that training was provided before the start of the school year. It doesn't mean there won't be more training opportunities throughout the year. And teachers, administrators, this is where you could be giving me and my team a lot of feedback as to what that training needs to entail as we move forward. So again, a lot of virtual PD opportunities will exist this year, um, and we wanna be able to tailor it to your needs. Now, I indicated, I indicated how important it is that we all mask up, but there are right ways to wear your mask and wrong ways to wear your mask. And as you could tell by the images presented here, if you're only covering your nose, that's not effective and won't help mitigate the spread of COVID. If you wear it as a chin strap, that won't mitigate the spread, all right? You have to cover both your nose and your mouth. And as you can see to the right here, we are not going to permit gaiters or any of the masks that has the ventilation sides. And that is per the Department of Health guidelines in Orange County. So we need you to wear the right kind of mask we won't be permitting gaiters, and if you have a mask that has the ventilation sides, those won't be permitted in the building. If you have questions about wearing a mask or the, type, the right type of mask, you can always turn to your counselor, your administrator, or your teacher. Now, just to ensure we're providing more guidance, in the unfortunate event someone does contract COVID, what the process will be for both students and adults, all right? In this case, if you uh, present symptoms based on what the CDC and the Department of Health has highlighted as symptoms, we are going to require you to go see your primary care physician and be tested. We are going to expect that you return a negative test and medical clearance from your doctor. However, I, want, I need to be very clear we will not be allowing you to come back into the building unless you have the medical clearance. So it just won't be a negative test. We're, we're going to ask for both the negative test and the medical clearance. However, if you bring us just the medical clearance, we will allow you back in. All right, we, we prefer both, but the one that is absolute is the medical clearance. Now, recently, the governor uh, announced that schools will now be required daily to submit information to the COVID-19 school report card. So this is something that will be required every day. In fact, we did our first one today, uh, and we had a DOH webinar uh, late afternoon going over the expectations for what school districts will now be required to do as it relates to informing the community as to the positive rates in schools. Here's another area where I need to be clear. Newburgh schools will not be testing. We will be informing you of where you can test and all that information is already made publicly available. But as a school district, we are not testing individuals. We will encourage you to visit uh, many of the sites across Orange County that where you can be tested and or you can go to your physician. However, we will have the responsibility daily to submit information to uh, the Department of Health via this dashboard that you will have as a community, you will have access to, to keep track of and monitor what the positivity rates are and the spread of COVID is not only in Newburgh, you'll have access of that for every, every district in the entire state. This is new. Uh, a lot of information came out today. And I know folks are kind of scrambling, trying to get the necessary information. Uh, we're going to work with our schools. And uh, we've already started providing the necessary training to individuals who will help submit this daily information to New York State Department of Health. And again, uh, board members, community members, uh, family members, employees, uh, we need your help. So 
the Department of Health will not tell us exactly who tested positive. So this is where you can use the hotline and this is where individuals can come forward themselves and give us the necessary information where we can begin the process of contact tracing in collaboration with the Department of Health. So this is very much a team effort. Again, the science, the medical science is clear on how COVID could be mitigated. People need to wear their mask every day. It's one of the biggest ways to mitigate the spread. Nevertheless, we will be reporting daily as to what the infection rates are in our school district. All right, pre-K and K Chromebooks. They will be delivered soon. Just a big shout out to our tech team, uh, Ms. Peterson for their, their just due diligence on reaching out and making sure uh, these additional Chromebooks would come our way. I did hear from a school today that 95% of the pre-K and K families came to the school to pick up packets. So families, just thank you. Thank you so much for your flexibility and your patience. Uh, we really appreciate it. You know, obviously we're, we're all experiencing some challenging times and uh, you know, we believe you'll only have to deal with the packets for just a short while. And then uh, we'll be informing you when you can pick up the Chromebooks. Uh, to the families who have reached out and given us feedback on our registration process, thank you. We understand it has not been perfect and it has caused a lot of valid frustration. This year we rolled out uh, a new system to be able to do the registration online. We understand families uh, were having some difficulty uploading critical documents that otherwise you would have submitted in person. And then there are some things on our end that just needed to be tightened up so that way the delay wasn't as long as it has been. So again, I just wanna thank you for your patience and again, and your criticism, right? Uh, your feedback helps us when it's good feedback and when it's critical feedback, they both work the same when it helps districts to move forward and grow. So we hope to, you know, our, our registration team has been working late nights, they've been working on the weekends, to uh, expedite some of the delays that we've experienced. Uh, we're gonna be doing a new school calendar this year. Uh, and so uh, as a cost saving measure, we won't be sending home the, uh, the hard copy uh, calendar. However, we'll have two different areas on the website where you will see what's happening in the district on any given day and any given month. Uh, so right up at the top, you're going to see a month at a glance. This just happens to be September. Uh, and then we'll also have the Google Calendar uh, where you have always found it, where you can see what's happening next month, December, February, et cetera. Again, another area where you could give us feedback because we are trying something new. Again, you will be able to see two different versions of the digital calendar a glance for the month, as well as more detailed information for upcoming months uh, in the Google Calendar. And then lastly, I just need to stress to everyone, we all need to do our part. We all need to uh, practice due diligence here, mask up, as our go back here is visually showing you. Uh, when you're in public, help other people who might run out quickly and forget that they need to put their mask on because it's not only about protecting you, it's about protecting everyone else around you as well. Madam President, I'll open the floor up for uh, Q&A at this point. Thank you, board members. Any questions or comments? Mr. Levenstein? Hello, um, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so I, I just have questions on the dashboard, that information that just came out today. Um, where is the data coming from going into the dashboard? If, if the Department of Health is a positive case and doesn't tell the district um, who the child is or adult is in the building, where is that data coming from? From employees or from parents giving you the information? Yeah, it, it could be a combination of a few things. Uh, the what we experienced today didn't necessarily ask for a person, although I, I got to be honest with you, it was the first time I saw it this afternoon with a few people on the team. 
so it's you know it's asking for what what instructional model are we currently in obviously that varies across new york state uh how many students are enrolled in a particular building how many how many people were in the actual building for that particular day and we got to do this for every school so every school we have to identify the enrollment how many employees work there how many actual teachers are uh you know work in the particular school uh, and if there are any reported cases, there are some of the larger districts like New York City specifically that is managing their own testing. Uh, in that case, there's a section in there where they have to report how many people they tested and or if there were any positives there. We'll report positives as it relates to what the Department of Health tells us. But so we're dependent on getting accurate and timely information from students or parents and employees and for the partial information that the Department of Health is giving us to, to do this. Mr. Levenstein, I saw the governor's uh, report today and he talked at length about this and he said it was gonna be a three-pronged uh, data uh, input. One, the, the uh, Department of Health is going to be inputting data themselves. Then we need to do input, and then parents uh, and community needs to do input. So they were hoping to do it that way. It was very confusing on his um, on his, uh, his his talk. If the Department of Health is inputting data, and we don't know who they're putting it in for a positive test, how can we? say, oh, uh, this student in this building is positive, they may already be, have been entered. Yeah. Mr. Levenstein, are you saying this doesn't make sense? <laughs> I wouldn't say, say that, so. No, I, but I mean, I'm being facetious. The reality, I, know. I mean, the reality is there are some components to this that seem a bit tricky. And right now it appears it's a way to triangulate and make sure they have the most accurate information. And that's what Ms. Maneo was alluding to. And we, you know, we have to do our part. Uh, and again, one of the biggest new features about this is that the community will be able to see the positivity rates of each district. And, and that's, you know, and that's good for transparency. Of course, of course, thank you. Mr. Forget, Mr. Forget, do you have a comment on this item? And then I'll get to the... Yeah, just, just one piece on this. So it's it's reporting that's coming from three different ways, as Ms. Maneo said. It's coming from the district, it's coming from the Department of Health, and then it's coming from the labs where the, the individuals are being tested. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. Um, so I don't think it's obviously, it's data is only as good as it's used for its intended purpose, right? So this is trying to give us a gauge as to how well and how, how our, our schools are responding to uh, the needs of our faculty, our staff, and our students. And that's, that's kind of giving us the gauge for, you know, uh, as a system, are we doing what's in the best interest of all the individuals possible, as opposed to targeting specific individuals to, to guide them and help them get healthy. Um, so I see this as more of a systems type of approach to monitor the progress of the interventions we're putting in place to remain safe compared to other schools and districts across the state. So that's, that's the way I interpret this data. And again, like Dr. Padilla said, I heard the governor this morning and then at 12 o'clock, Dr. Padilla got an email and we were on a webinar and we were collecting data to submit by the end of the day. That's how quick this came out. But I have to respect the Department of Health. What they said to us was, approach this particular initiative as if we are going for progress. We're going for data progress and submitting data and, and progressing as we get better and better at this data collection rather than perfection at first. So I, I have to ad admit that the New York State Department of Health was very supportive on the call. We have to do it, but they're, they're also supporting us to do it. Thank you, Mr. For Thank you, Mr. Forget. Mr. Stradiron, I see your hand. Thank you, Madam President. Re regard to the outage today, the, was it primarily linked to the class link 
uh, software. And if that software continues to give the district a problem, what is the backup solution to connect students with the teachers? Yeah, it, it was primarily class link, the bulk of it. And, uh, you know, we're, it's something we're going to be monitoring first thing tomorrow morning uh, to see if we have a uh, repeat of that. Now, again, as I indicated, the uh, class link has informed us that the issue has been rectified. Uh, however, if we continue to experience it, this is how our students, it's, it's a one-stop shop where they only have to go in through one link and then have access to a full platform of software that we have to offer. As you can imagine, uh, well, as it relates to Google Classroom and, and other programs, we would have to find a backdoor uh, response to getting, to ensuring students are not prevented access via ClassLink. And, and there's ways to do it. We'd have to turn some things off. You know, it'd be some back end operational issues that we'd have to deal with because our whole system right now is linked through this process. So we'd have to kind of go back to the time when we didn't have class link. And, you know, that would just, that would have to take some time. But all the students and teachers who were able to get on prior to the outage, they were fine. It was really during that period of time. Uh, where they got in afterwards. What time did the outage begin? Because I, I, I'm hearing it was right after school opened. Yeah, um, I'm hearing, to, yeah, I heard the same thing. So nine, you know, 9.15-ish, 9 9.10-ish. Do, do we know how many students were not able to access through ClassLink? Uh, I don't have an exact number. Ms. Peterson, do you have an exact number? We can get that. I mean, we have the number of we have the number of logins, and it was in the thousands. Uh, so, Mr. Stridarn, I think the uh, other issue is attendance for today, and I'm hoping that we'll hear at our next meeting what the plan is will be for attendance vis-a-vis uh, -vis today. You know what I mean? Yep. Well, they can't count today. If a student was able to log on, they should not count that against the student. Correct. Exactly. Thank you. Dr. Henderson, please. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just have two comments. Um, one related to the um, Department of Health and the COVID uh, reporting. Um, I do believe, um, just you know, from um, my personal and professional experience, that if an um, individual is tested, um, the lab will contact that individual, at least for adults, contact that individual, let them know of the positive test. Um, the lab is then going to automatically contact the Department of Health for which that person resides. Um, once the Department of Health contacts that person, the uh, commissioner um, is going to uh, send a standing isolation order, which varies depending on that person's situation, whether they're um, an essential employee or whether they're not um, and depending on the type of medication that they've had to take or they haven't had to take um, so I think you know as it relates to either in-person uh, learning uh, either with the students or with the staff members you know it's, it's going to be pretty self-evident I would think um, if uh, a student um, possibly had a positive case and how to narrow that down because that student would most likely be absent for multiple days. Um, otherwise they can face, you know, many charges. Um, so I think that's helpful to know. Um, and the other thing I wanted to comment on was just to give a, a kudos or a tip of the hat to um, all of the um, staff members, um, the teachers, the administrators, um, teachers especially who have really stepped up during this time. Um, I think it's been really, really difficult. The students really look forward to the first day of school, and I know the teachers do too. And um, through everything that's gone on, um, I think you, you know, all the staff members have really shined um, throughout the New Bergen Large City School District. So I just wanted to say thank you and um, continue to be flexible and know that, you know, uh, parents are, are flexible as well, and we really appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Henderson. I'm sure we all uh, agree with your statement and, and send kudos to our, our staff, teachers, principals, 
parents, everyone, every central office, all doing a great job. Thank you. Dr. Badia, that's all with the questions that we have. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and again, please, we encourage you to reach out to us and please give us your feedback so we can continue to learn and grow. Uh, item 2.2 is a resolution to authorize payment of memberships, uh, membership fees for Kiwanis, Newburgh Rotary, and Lowhut Council of School Superintendents. I'd like to entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. Questions or discussion? Roll call, Mr. Clerk. Ms. Burton? Yes. Dr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Maida? Yes. Ms. Maneo? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Stridiron? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. That concludes my items for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Badia. We're going to move on to my item. Uh, this is a resolution to spend, suspend all facilities used by outside organizations, with the exception of um, the schools that were noted for elections. I hope everybody took a look at that. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. Questions or discussion? Mr. Stridiron? Okay, you just brought up about the elections. Now, will there be any staff in the buildings on election day at all? Or is it just gonna be open for voting? I'm gonna let Mr. Ford answer that. Mr. So we'll work, we'll work that out with the facility use request that we get from the Board of Elections. I'm sure there will be monitors and custodians. What's, what's also up, um, helpful is there will be no students. That's 100% virtual that day. We, we put that on the calendar last week that you approved. But will there be teachers teaching virtually from the schools that day? Not on that day, Mr. Stridiron. We're going to keep the buildings clear. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I believe, Dr. Henderson, you have your hand up. Yes, Madam President, thank you. Um, I just want to um, bring up something that was brought to my attention um, just regarding some of the facilities use as it relates to the football field and track, which seems to be having like a very high uh, volume of people either training um, on the field and or utilizing those facilities. Um, what's our current policy um, regarding um, facility use um, for, for non-students, especially during the pandemic? Thank you. So as it relates to accessing the track, uh, you know, that's been allowed. However, we have had some issues with people actually on the fields and running workouts and trainings. Uh, you know, we have seen a spike in that, certainly in uh, during the month of August. Uh, our director of security and safety has been notified. We've been in contact with uh, the police precincts where typically this has occurred. Uh, we even saw in one case, someone advertising a whole workout facility uh, on one of the fields. So we are aware of it. We have been trying to address it. We have been notifying the police as well. Thank you, Dr. Perdue. Roll call, Mr. Clark, on this item. Dr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Maida? Yes. Ms. Maneo? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Stridari? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Burton? Yes. Thank you. We're going to move on to our Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum Elementary, Mrs. Moriarty. Thank you, Madam President. Elementary Curriculum Instruction has two items for your consideration this evening. Would any member like to separate out any of these items? I'd like to entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. Questions or discussion? Roll call, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Maida? Yes. Ms. Maneo? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Stridiron? Yes. 
Mr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Burton? Yes. Dr. Henderson? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. That concludes my items. Thank you, Mrs. Moriarty. We're going to move on to our Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum Secondary, Mr. Bayer. Thank you, Madam President. Curriculum and Instruction Secondary has two items on the consent agenda for your consideration. Thank you. Um, would any member like to separate out any of these items? I'd like to entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. Questions or discussion? Roll call, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Maida? Yes. Ms. Mineo? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Strunayer? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Burton? Yes. Dr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Thank you, that concludes my items. Thank you, Mr. Bayer. We're going to move on to our Assistant Superintendent of Exceptional Learners, Dr. Roman. Good evening, Madam President. Thank you. Uh, the following items 6.1 through 6.3 are being offered as a consent agenda for your consideration. Would any member like to separate out any of these items? I'd like to entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. Questions or discussion? Roll call, Mr. Clerk. Ms. Maida? Yes. Ms. Mineo? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Stridarn? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Burton? Yes. Dr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. That concludes my items, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roman. We're going to move on to our Assistant Superintendent of Finance, Dr. Spindler. Thank you, Madam President. I present to the board items 7.1 through 7.11 as a consent agenda. Would any member like to separate out any of these items? I'd like to entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. Questions or discussion? Mr. Stridiron? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just a, a general question on the contract, the BOCES, the 100% virtual learning uh, affect these contracts. If we continue to go 100% virtual, will any of these contracts um, be impacted by that? Um, meaning that they will be impacted in which way that they would be reduced or increased. I need more specifics, please. Well, reduced. If we don't have students attending these BOCES or if there are testings that don't take place, I'm not too sure of all the details on these contracts, but will 100% will virtual learning, if it continues past October, any of these contracts be reduced to save the district money if we go 100% virtual. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stradine, for the clarification. Um, certain items in our BOCE lines are we're able to reduce because it's as a, a pay as you go. However, these, the particular um, items that I believe you're referring to are placement for our special education students in which uh, our students are receiving services. We would have to pay for those instructors um, at those facilities um, and those BOCES to provide that education. At this time, um, there has not been considered uh, talk uh, to us as a district that BOCES would be reducing their staff, um, therefore reducing any of this. If it is brought to our attention, I'd be sure to bring it to the board as a whole. So I, I do know that some BOCES did reduce their staff. If, if the students are um, having IEP uh, issues where their IEP isn't being met, does that impact the payment on the BOCES or is that handled another way? Ms. May, can you answer, cause that's a, sounds like a legal question. So if I understand Mr. Schrodiron, if they, if students who are at a district at a BOCES play, placement are not provided the services per their IEP, 
I guess, what would the consequences of that be? Um, yes, I'll answer for Ms. May. No, David Shaw here. So that's a contractual matter, and um, it will depend upon the circumstances. You would bring it to their attention and demand that the services be performed. Lack of performance creates a contract matter to be legally addressed. As of right now, even if we're in this situation with COVID, IEP services are required to be performed in full unless you have an agreement with, with the parents. Mr. Bayer, you have your hand up. Do, do, you, do you want to help us clarify that, please? I can speak for BOCES. Um, so we are uh, provided contracts that include the rate for uh, whatever the program costs, as well as the a la carte special related services that students may get, OTPT speech. They always uh, rectify that at the end of the year if for a reason there's an extended absence of an OT, for example, or a one-to-one -one was not able to provide it for a period of time. They do recalibrate the tuition at the end of the year and often give us some money back. So, you know, they make an effort to make sure all the services are in there. That's the requirement of the law. But if an OT was absent or a PT was absent, they do reduce that over time. And there is a rectification, a rec I can't say it right today. Re <laughs> they rectify it at the end of the year. <laughs> but just for COVID itself, they're not allowed to lower the IEP services for the students per the contract. No. No. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Mr. Bear, put your hand down in, in the little thing. Um, roll call, Mr. Clerk. Ms. Bonello. Yes. Ms. Santiago. Yes. Mr. Stridiron. Yes. Mr. Walker. Yes. Ms. Burton. Yes. Dr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yeah. Ms. Maida. Yes. Dr. Spindler? That concludes my items. Thank you, Ms. Manan. Thank you, Dr. Spindler. I'm going to ask everybody to mute yourself when you're not speaking, please. Thank you. We're going to move on to our assistant human, excuse me, assistant superintendent for human resources, Mr. McLemore. Thank you, Madam President. On the human resources agenda, I have items 8.1 through 8.3 for your consideration on tonight. Would any member like to separate out any of these items? I'd like to entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. Questions or discussion? Roll call, Mr. Clerk. Ms. Santiago? Yes. Mr. Stridiron? Yes. Mr. Walker? Ms. Burton? Yes. Dr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Maida? Yes. Ms. Maneo? Yes. That concludes my items, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McLemore. We're going to move on to the Clerk of the Board, Mr. McCoy. Thank you, Madam President. I have the approval of the minutes from August 11th and August 31st, 2020. Would any member like to separate out any of these items? I'd like to entertain a motion, please. So moved. Second. Questions or discussion? Yes, Mr. Stridiron. Thank you, Madam President. About three meetings ago, there was a, um, not say a promise, but there was an expectation that there would be public input at the board meetings and we haven't really heard anything since. Can, can someone provide an update as to what status of having public input for board meetings is? Mr. McCoy, can you uh, go over what Madam President informed the community about, please? I believe the notification was that the public comment was gonna start with the meeting starting in October. So we will be communicating that email address 
uh, towards the end of the month for the public comment to start at board meetings uh, through email uh, at the first meeting in October. Thank you. I was going to address that after this, um, these, the, these two items. So would uh, anybody else questions or discussion? Roll call, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Stridiron? Yes. Mr. Walker? Ms. Burton? Yes. Dr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Maida? Yes. Ms. Maneo? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. That concludes my items, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Uh, before we go, uh, there will be something at our next meeting. There will be the uh, specific email address that people can put their questions on, and those questions will be forwarded to the board, and uh, they will, some of them will be read, and they'll be read according to how they come in, uh, if, we have, if time permits, and we'll set up that process to be used at the first meeting in October. So thank you, everyone. I'd like to... Uh, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting, please. So moved. Second. Roll call, Mr. Clerk. Ms. Burton? Yes. Dr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Maida? Yes. Ms. Maneo? Yes. Ms. Santiago? Yes. And Mr. Stridiron? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Please be safe. Thank you, staff and everybody else. Have a good day.